Too many women feel caught between a rock and a hard place when balancing the need to have high standards while not scaring great men away. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you what are the top four boundaries you can set that will increase desire in great men while simultaneously push away those guys who would waste your time. A famous sexologist by the name of Jack Moraine came up with what he called the erotic attraction. And it goes something like this. Attraction plus obstacle equals desire. By the same token, attraction minus obstacle decreases desire. So here's how this lands in your world. You never want to play hard to get for a guy. You don't want to include some gimmicks for the guy or some fictitious hurdles or play games like maybe waiting five hours before you reply to a text so that he feels that you're super busy. Those are games that I never recommend. What you do want to do is you want to include the natural obstacles called boundaries that create enough safety in you for you to move forward. So the way to think about a boundary is here's what I need to feel safe enough to proceed to this stage of connection. Boundaries work very similarly to a pulp strainer. Imagine that you love orange juice, but you hate pulp. So what do you do? You get some oranges, you squeeze them in a jar, and then when it's time to drink it, before you drink the juice, you have to pour it through a pulp strainer. The pulp strainer is gonna allow the juice, the part that you enjoy about the orange to go through, while holding back the pulp. A boundary works the same way. It's going to allow those guys who have the intention, who have the capacity, who have the integrity, who have the juice that you're seeking to go through, and the guys who are game players, the guys who are maybe just wasting time, the guys who want a situationship, the guys who are confused, to be held behind. What won't happen is you being confused in the mix of someone who doesn't want what you want. The three most powerful benefits for you in setting this kind of boundaries that I'm about to share is, number one, boundaries are an act of self-love. For you to set a boundary, you need to understand what do you value, and you need to value yourself enough and have enough courage to actually state, here's what I need going forward. A boundary is gonna save not just you time, it's gonna save him time. Because if the guy is looking for someone easy, if the guy is looking for someone who is looking for maybe a friend with benefits and you're not, he's wasting his energy on the wrong person. So by stating that boundary, he's going to be able to move on and continue his search for something that's more basic and allow you to go look for your high end goal. And the third thing that the boundary does, it's, it's going to inspire the best in a man. Why? Because if the guy has desire and if he wants to be a strong human being, the act of you setting those healthy boundaries is going to make him tap into the part of himself that he may not volunteer for, but will actually step into when given a chance. The first boundary I need you to set is the boundary of intentionality. And what does this mean? It means that you refuse to go on dates and invest time and energy on men who want something different than you want long term. Why is this? Because if the guy wants something pretty basic, if he wants a weekend girlfriend and that's as far as he wants to go, if he wants no commitment but still wants to enjoy a woman's energy and have physical contact and sex with her and you want something that ends in marriage and a family and uh, the spiritual, emotional and even legal contract that this requires, then it's going to be a painful experience for both of you. So this boundary means that you're going to ask the necessary questions before you start going on dates with guys and you're going to do them early on so that you feel engaged if the guy is looking for a similar type of end goal and he lives in the same universe that you live in, metaphorically speaking. And you're going to do this by not just coming up with a long list of questions and asking him in a sort of like job interview or inquisition. You're going to combine the questions you need with questions that allow him to express himself, playful questions, joyful questions. You wanna be detached from his specific answers because ultimately you're looking for a guy who wants those things. If he's not him, then the world is abundant enough for you to move on and get what you want. Now, if the guy ends up wanting what you want, then proceed and continue connecting with them. If the guy is confused, if he wants something different, then be courageous enough to say, thank you so much for being honest with me. If this ever changes, if you're looking for this type of relationship down the line, then reach back. Other than that, I'm gonna move on. Second boundary is the boundary of physical contact. The boundary of physical contact is especially important if you are highly sensitive, 
Why? Because the more highly sensitive you are, the more the physical contact will impact you in emotional ways where you might get attached to the wrong person earlier. Same thing if you are maybe, if you have an attachment style that's more anxious, again, the physical contact will make you crave that human being more than if there's more distance between both of you. And the third one is if you have not had this type of contact for a long, long time, it's been years that you haven't had the connection that's this intense, then again, physical contact early on will confuse you. Physical contact has the capacity to create a false sense of connection with someone. It's going to mess with your biochemistry and it's going to create a need for you to be closer to this person. If this person's not the right man for you, then you're going to, your brain will start brainwashing you in subtle ways and not so subtle ways for you to continue the connection even though the connection is harmful to you. It's similar to a drug that feels good in the moment, but isn't good for you. The boundary of physical contact means you're going to establish for yourself how comfortable you feel with different stages of contact, whether it's holding hands, whether it's kissing on the lips, whether it's making out. And the most gracious way you can state this is connect with someone and tell them early on, listen, it takes me longer to connect physically than maybe other women you've connected with. And for me, it's really important to have an emotional connection, to know that there's some level of compatibility before I open myself up and I open my body up to connect. It doesn't mean that I don't want to do it. It doesn't mean that it won't happen. It just means that it takes me longer. Now, here's what happens when you share that boundary. If the guy is of the type who's looking for a long-term commitment and he has your safety in mind, he's going to say, great, let's take the time to get to know each other. And as things progress, he'll start figuring out what's the right ratio of physical contact versus emotional contact. If he's the type of guy who isn't self-aware, who is not really great for long-term relationships, who is more selfish in nature, he's not only going to tell you that he's not up for it, but he's going to try to make you feel wrong for it. He's gonna to try to shame you. He's gonna to try to tell you that you're too uptight, that you're out of this world, that no one's gonna watch. Like whenever you see a guy, when you state a boundary, whether it's this one or another one, try to reverse it and make you feel wrong, that's a sign to run for the heels, to say thanks, but no thanks, and move on. Why? Because there's higher risk for you in physical contact than for him. And if he doesn't understand that, then you choose to connect with someone who's self-aware enough in 2023 <laughs> to get this. Now, if you're a single woman watching this, my bet is you're not fully aware of the true root cause why you're still single. And if you wanna find out the blind spot that's keeping you single, I've taken many years of helping women find love in different age groups, different continents, different walks of life, and I put them together in a simple quiz you can take in 60 seconds. If you wanna find out the answer to the question, why am I still single, all you have to do is go to the first link under the description of this video. You're gonna see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions, and in 60 seconds or so, You'll have the answer to that question and also a report that's gonna show you, the num based on your specific blind spot, what's the number one thing you can do starting today to reverse this trend and attract the guy you want much faster than your current path. The third boundary that I need you to set is the boundary of sex. My recommendation is that you don't have sex with a man until you're in an exclusive relationship. Some people wanna take it all the way to marriage, which I don't recommend, for the specific reason that sex is gonna be a very strong component of your marriage. And if you're incompatible sexually and you wait that long and you find out on your wedding night that this guy has some very nasty habits, you're kind of stuck with him <laughs> for the rest of your life. But if you take time earlier before that happens, then you might figure out how to make this work in a way that's still safe in the container of exclusivity, in the container of commitment. And I'm not stating by saying wait until you're exclusive that you don't want to have sex earlier. Of course, you have feelings, you have needs, and you might, have, you might want to have sex very early on. The reason why I ask you to wait is because you want for the guy to invest emotionally. You want for the guy to really show you through time that he wants what you want that he's not just there for a hit and run situation, that he's not gonna ghost you once you feel vulnerable and you gave something that's so precious to you. So the boundary of sex means that you're gonna stay to the guy that you don't want to have sex until you're in an exclusive relationship and that you want to make sure that there's the emotional connection, that you wanna make sure that there's compatibility, that you wanna make sure that there's a true sense of growing into the same destination 
and having that safety that allows you to diminish the risk. You can't eliminate the risk of someone ending up being a really bad guy for you, but you can radically diminish the risk if you set these kinds of boundaries. The fourth boundary that I'd love for you to set is the boundary of exclusivity. And that boundary means that you're not going to be exclusive with a guy until you have some time of knowing him, some time of understanding the truth of who he is versus what he claims and states that he is. And my recommendation would be, and it's not a rule, it's a principle. Uh, you can take longer for sure if you need to, but I wouldn't recommend being exclusive with anyone that you haven't get, gotten a chance to know for at least maybe three month period. Why is that? Because there's going to be an initial excitement that's going to start waning through time. And if you wait a little longer, you might see that that excitement is completely gone. And had you been exclusive, you're cutting off from other men. You're giving this guy your heart, your time, your energy, your body. And again, if you figure out that he has some really bad habits or maybe a mental challenge that you didn't foresee at the beginning, then you're kind of stuck in this embrace that's going to be very painful and very hard for you to get out of. Exclusivity means that you're going to take your time to date more than one guy at a time, that you're going to hold off on the physical contact until you feel there's some level of compatibility, that you're going to hold off until sex and you're exclusive, that, you, that you're going to allow yourself to get to know this guy's friends. You want to understand how he handles conflict. You want to understand how he handles difficult conversations. You want to know how he treats other people in situations that may not be day to day. So when you take a little longer to set these boundaries, and I understand there's a level of fear of, what if I state this boundary and the guy goes away? Remember the analogy of the orange juice. If the guy is someone who wants something long-term, if he's looking for something serious, if he values you as a human being, then he's gonna step through these hurdles and the hurdles will continue increasing his desire. If he's the type of guy who doesn't have it in him to be serious in a relationship, then he's going to not be able to go through the hurdles and maybe even attempt to make you feel wrong for them. Hope this is helpful and useful. If you found this video helpful, then it would mean a lot to me and to my channel if you click like and subscribe. And if you want to find out how you can attract your ideal guy without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games or stupid techniques, make sure to go to this video right here.